The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, David White. And welcome all to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour. And of course, that's always at the appointed time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. So we've got uh, kind of a down day, a little quiet going into numbers tomorrow morning that I think a lot of people are uh, whistling past the graveyard on. CPI does not in uh, include uh, energy, and that's probably the biggest thing that has changed since the last one. But uh, my belief is all those inputs uh, from energy in the last couple of months are going to start showing up in that CPI uh, of course, they call it the core and non-core. So I think we're probably in for a little uh, surprise tomorrow morning, but uh, we shall see. Uh, 877-927-6648. And uh, eh, we've got a little bit of action going on today, uh, and we'll get to most of it. Um, give me an email at path at tfnn.com. But uh, I suspect that we're on some kind of pullback. Uh, and eventually, I think we have to go back and retest 3750 one more time on kind of a bigger scale. Uh, I think a lot of people are just assuming that uh, the Fed's going to go away. And every day they get a little bit bolder in telling us that uh, we're kind of also being a little bit too optimistic. So... We went uh, from about an 80 percent uh, chance of a three quarter uh, percent uh, raise to about 100 uh, percent for September. Now the question is, when do we start hearing maybe interim uh, rate hikes and maybe more than three quarters, maybe one percent, maybe some combination of both of those rumors. But my guess is after tomorrow, we're going to start seeing that. So, on volume, it's okay. Is it a little light? Yeah, could be. It's about 6.8 billion shares. Uh, but we, the, the rallies have been with incredibly light volume. Downside is only slightly more volume, but it's still not finding a lot of buyers. I put in my newsletter this morning the... Uh, percentage for the dark pools uh, we continue to have a huge uh, well let me put it this way a greater uh, percentage of the the trades now uh, I have continued to be with the uh, men on the street and not with the retail trader generally when those dark pool numbers come down that's a good indication that you're getting cash in from uh, around the world and from retail traders so i'm kind of looking at this as a wall street um kind of uh dead cat bounce off the lows at the moment uh, but, uh, yeah, I'm not expecting everything to be all rosy and sunshiny. And, uh, yeah, probably a lot of rose-colored glasses right now. Uh, but uh, we shall see. Again, I'm kind of a little bit bearish out here. We'll see how the uh, close comes in. But uh, I would not be surprised of a fairly uh, big gap lower as we go into the open tomorrow. Uh, other things going on. Um, we've got more comments uh, from the, to, to, let me get back here. It was, uh, uh, what is the name of that company? Eh, see if I can remember it right now. I'll think about it in a minute. Uh, NVDA. Oh, Take Two. Uh, TTWO, right? Take Two Interactive uh, coming out, if I've done that right. Okay. Um, with uh, forecasts on the gaming sector. Uh, they're they're down a little bit, some decent volume both yesterday and today, uh, but they're talking about really the gaming sector and 
that's kind of an L.A. based thing. They've had a lot of problems uh, getting uh, programmers and everything around L.A. Uh, and the uh, E3 conference, which is when? Uh, to, 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 uh, let's take a look at it and what they've done about it, too. Let's see out here. I'll do a little on air research. Uh, let's see, uh, E3. Uh, okay. Electronic Entertainment Experience. Uh, da da da. Uh, uh, okay, see you next year. I don't see anything on here. I don't know what they're doing anyway. Uh, but uh, uh, did they just ignore it? Is it not going to happen at all? I think that's a little bit of the problems. It's based in L.A., and they're having real tough problems because every time they try to schedule something, uh, the governor uh, pulls the uh, rug out from under them on it. But uh, a lot of these guys, you know, you have the convention, which is normally at the end of the summer, and you start seeing these new games really start to come out. Well, you got two problems. One, the companies are kind of tend to be based around there, or, or many of them. And uh, these folks haven't been working hard or working at all, and there aren't a lot of new games, or the games that they have are being delayed. Uh, anyway, um, NVIDIA really kind of taking the heat out of uh, some of the SMHs and that sector. Take two kind of uh, added fuel to the fire uh, to yesterday's downturn in NVIDIA. Uh, NVDA. Um, but I think a lot of these are going to need at least need to probably go back and retest the previous lows. That's 140 55 on NVIDIA, and I think it's very tough to think that it's not going to take two quarters uh, for them to get through. Now, the market says that it looks forward for six months, but I think that the issue is going to be that they won't be able to keep the prices up uh, maybe for, it may take another year to get through um, the overhang, uh, get the new products out. Uh, they're already talking about delaying the fall release of the 4000 series video cards to next year uh, in early spring so that they can sell the product that they have now. Um, we've seen cards that normally were selling for 2000 2200 now available for 1200 bucks. So there is a glut, and it's probably not going away. And the game business doesn't have, at least we don't know of, a really hot seller for this Christmas. Um, and I think that they may have suffered the whole industry from gaming, which is what NVIDIA has been commenting on, uh, is uh, going to be light because they don't have that killer game that everybody's been looking for or the next release of a series uh, that people are looking for. And I think that the super high price of video cards over the last year, year and a half has led uh, people to get into maybe some other things. So anyway, not a, a good looking site. You don't have near the volume you had yesterday kind of coming into support, but I suspect it's going to be a tough uh, fall for NVIDIA. We'll be back in a minute. In a time of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16-year mine life. All of this, combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits, this distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 873 7618. As we return, we go to some other stocks that were earnings. Um, DDD Systems uh, down today eh, fairly nicely. Uh, got to a high yesterday, 1342. Uh, did hit a low of 1068 today, trading at about 1124. So what do we have here? Well, supply issues, supply issues, supply issues uh, are problematic. Uh, there is kind of a big uh, change coming in this industry, and that is uh, what a lot of people have been waiting for for a while, and that is um, metal printing. And it's starting to really catch a little bit of fire. Uh, one of the other stocks that have been in this sector, kind of a, uh, a fourth or fifth runner, has been desktop metal. Um, don't see a lot in here other than it's kind of hanging, hanging at these highs. Uh, gap down with a massive amount of volume to $1.26. Got to $2.74 on June 24th with 82 million shares. Still not enough. Uh, tested that with uh, July 20th with 11 million shares. And then uh, today with man, about 6 million shares so far. So, you know... There's no shorting a $3 stock, but uh, none of these really look good. They're kind of at the, um, what do I want to say, uh, at the whim of whether or not uh, many of this, the uh, parts come from China. Um, and, of course, the darling of Wall Street themselves in this sector uh, is Stratasys. Um, it's down a little bit on fairly light volume, but all you can say about this thing is it's, and a trading range of about a buck higher and a buck lower. Uh, so, and not much to actually put on there. Uh, they've been pushing Apple all day long uh, on the financial infotainment <coughs> channels. Uh, there isn't a great deal of volume on this one either. Doing about 37 million shares compared to 60 million. Uh, 
when it reversed off the top yesterday. As I suspect, we're going to continue to see this happen. But uh, throughout the day and even uh, yesterday, we're starting to see kind of a different pattern, at least I am. And that is uh, they're trying to pump this up somewhere around noonish, maybe get a few people try to buy, uh, buy the dip. Uh, for retail traders, but generally by the time we get to this time in the day, um, the rallies have uh, pretty much petered out because they were on light or no volume. Um, but at the same time, we don't have a lot of people going short. Uh, the people that were short pretty much gave their money back to the Mr. Market. And now we're looking at a market, like I said, that you want to really watch out for. And that is because most of the shorts, if not all, well, there's never all of them, but uh, I'm going to say most of the shorts have covered or got out uh, if they had any kind of medium or shorter term time frames. Maybe the big guys on the street are going to be sitting on their hands for the next year or two. But uh, we pretty much saw the weakest hands out there uh, give it up. And a lot of the discussion is about the meme stocks. Uh, like Bed Bath & Below, uh, reversing out here. It got uh, the nice turnaround signal today. Uh, it was probably the shortest of the meme stocks. I think it was about a 40% uh, uh, percent float. Uh, there is some discussion on whether or not some of the bigger holders had been moving their, stock, uh, their shares in and out of margin accounts to cause this and get out at higher prices. Uh, that is not illegal, and if you're new to the show or the market, uh, to borrow shares to go short, you have to actually uh, have uh, somebody with shares in a margin account. Uh, if they take those shares out, then those uh, the amount of shares in the float uh, changes, and someone's going to have to give up their shares if there aren't enough shares uh, totally out there. So the question is whether or not uh, that uh, insiders uh, caused a rally in this to get out of it at much higher prices. It happens more uh, often than you would think. Uh, but, uh, you know, generally when you're rallying in a bear market, this is a pattern. I'm not – one of the reasons why I really kind of have a, a, a deadline on shorting stocks below 30 bucks. Uh, it just happens more often than it uh, you would like to see. So uh, is that kind of kind of the beginning there? I say that's it. We covered Apple, um, AMD uh, again along getting towed along with uh, Nvidia uh, and some of the other ones. Um, unreal, uh, unclear. Certainly, uh, AMD is becoming more like Intel, and Intel more like the old AMD. Uh, I'm thinking that uh, AMD could bottom before NVIDIA. Uh, not uh, so chained only to uh, the miners, although it's got a little bit of that. Uh, but uh, the other things are that they do have some very good new chips coming out in the uh, server uh, area uh, and they they call it their what epic line uh, and the just a couple of them just came out there's a lot of reviews on them on YouTubes uh, for those folks that do workstations and and uh, small server kind of business uh, I think the chips about I wanted to say it was a five grand or six grand chip. So they're becoming a little bit more like Intel with very high price server products. And for the most part, they're actually fairly good. Uh, most uh, big uh, companies will pay the extra money like uh, the big web services. But uh, a lot of uh, folks uh, that have uh, web services in other countries uh, are starting to switch so that it is a bigger problem, an ongoing problem from Intel as we look at that. Um, and yeah, with Intel, you're actually breaking through the previous low. You don't have the, well, you only needed 33 million shares uh, from the July 5th low. You attacked it with more volume. You had a very tepid bounce. 
uh, off that uh, gap down from earnings, and now you're breaking through it. You need, uh, well, you got 31, you need 33. So my guess is you're going to have probably something like 38 or 40 million shares. And that's going to be a valid break of the lows for Intel. And now well, I don't know how far we have to go back, even if we could, to find a low out here that uh, Intel, I mean, once you hit 39, uh, that was back to October 24th of 2018. Uh, you actually have kind of a small gap up that really never got filled. It goes back to see, October 27th of 2017. What's the price of that? Uh, 39.09. So yeah, you you're kind of back into what support should be. But yeah, let's see if I can get back here. Well. We'll be back in a minute. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And uh, come back. Uh, we were talking about Intel. Um, I moved the chart, but I uh, went back and looked. The next low out there for support comes in at about 31. So that could be it. Now, I had a question on Microsoft about uh, buying 280 calls. I'm not a big fan of that particular position. Um, and one of the reasons why is it is just up against the downtrend line. And I don't see anything really that changes that. Maybe until September, uh, till September. Uh, where I have it? No, that's not it. There it is. Uh, anyway, uh, we're at the downtrend line. Um, 
the energy on the way down uh, has been pretty much on my power law vector indicator of 14. On the way up, it's been a 10, and then that's been it. So I, I think that you probably got everything off the lows that you could expect. Again, I'm fairly bearish going in through the next few weeks. So I would probably be out of any calls. Um, I'm kind of in the other camp. So don't see a lot there. I got some more emails too. So we'll go out there. Okay, got that, got that. Okay. Uh, so kind of interesting NFLX uh, watching the streaming wars. Um, I always kind of like stuff that you at least have some kind of idea what they're doing. And more and more, we're starting to see the streaming minutes uh, for each platform and actually for what they were watching, too. And, uh, you know, the uh, Amazon uh, has uh, the uh, uh, a fairly good property, I guess, in this terminal list. I haven't watched it. Uh, but uh, I know a lot of people have talked about it. Um, getting a lot of, uh, of uh, views on it, it probably doesn't affect Amazon quite as much as uh, Netflix being a pure play on the streaming issues. Probably the most interesting thing about the terminal list is on Rotten Tomatoes by reviewers, it's in the low 30s. On viewers, it's 95 so talk about uh, actually having really two really different world views uh, for a bunch of folks of which I think something like half or three quarters live in California, opposed to the other 95% of us that live in the rest of the country, uh, thinking that it's 95% good and them only thinking it's 35% good. Uh, probably tells you a lot about regional differences, um, but uh, I think that's one of the big advantages we have, or a lot of us have, and that is that we don't live uh, anywhere close to Wall Street, uh, so we don't have uh, the same TV shows, we don't have the same issues, the same teachers for our kids, and uh, we have a little bit better worldview uh, with a little bit of diversity. Um, that probably Rotten Tomatoes could get for the terminal list. But, um, again, uh, Netflix getting some huge numbers uh, from, uh, and still is, uh, from uh, the last season and people catching up with uh, the uh, Stranger Things. But uh, very interesting to see that everybody else um, is not doing that well on streaming minutes. Uh, the other thing is that we are seeing uh, something that I think is uh, called the 80-20 rule, and that is, or 20-80 rule, depending on how you look at it, and that is that these shows, about 20% of the shows uh, end up uh, being 80% of the entire streaming minutes, and that's following along fairly succinctly, uh, which means that if these guys are going to turn around and make some money, they're probably going to have to cut out the shows that no one's watching. Now, some of these things are um, uh, beauty or passion products or uh, pro uh, projects or something, but I don't. Th I think the day's over when these companies can do that. They're going to have to probably start focusing the money on stuff that actually people watch instead of things that they want to think make those folks want. Now. That being said, no, Netflix has two big, large gaps. My suspicion is before it finds a low, you're going to get one more big lower gap down. That happens about 80% of the time. Uh, you get two big gaps like you had. This one's, what, 60 bucks off of 500 and then, uh, was it uh, 70 or 80 bucks off of 310 down to 230 uh, We're just kind of coming back up to that level. But uh, you can kind of see in time, a lot of the times you do have some synchronicity in the way that those gaps come in. So you have the first gap uh, coming in here on the uh, 
was that uh, January 20th. The second gap comes in on the 4th. Uh, and so that would suggest that uh, somewhere out here uh, in the sevens uh, is uh, uh, we're getting now we're kind of getting along in the tooth out here. Uh, but we could get ready for that next really big gap lower. Okay. Uh, yeah. I'm not that. I, I generally want to trade in the, uh, someone had a comment. I generally want to trade in the direction of the market. And if the market's weak, I want to be short, even if it's uh, bouncing. And uh, when the uh, market is strong, I generally want to be on the long side. Um, now, for years, we had a problem with the Fed uh, Mickey Mousing with the returns. But uh, pretty much everything's returned to normal now that they shut the spigot off. Uh, to, to, to it's like it was the previous 120 or 140 years for price and volume trading. Uh, to, to, okay, question on the TLT, which we will get to. Uh, you don't have much. Um, I'm watching it very closely over the next couple of days because I've seen, I just happened to wake up, I don't know what it was, two or three in the morning and turned on Bloomberg. Uh, I like to occasionally watch what they have to say uh, when they're talking to everybody in Europe or in China. And eh, they don't say the same thing that they say here when U.S. Uh, folks are up and watching. They're a lot more iffy on the United States than most people would think if you watched uh, U.S. television or watched when Bloomberg was on, not in the middle of the night when they're uh, talking to the people in England and uh, Western Europe and a little bit of China still left over. Uh, but um, I'm wondering if there isn't some kind of nervousness now that we've got, but not much movement, but not much volume either in the TLT for today. So we're not getting any kind of signal on that. Uh, what do we have here? Down uh, 25, kind of bouncing around here. Again, not a lot of volume up or down. My guess is that's going to come uh, more uh, late in the day. Um, Workday had some big moves earlier in the week. And uh, Jane wants to have me take a quick little look. Um, you got an inside day on very light volume on that. So there isn't a whole lot. I think we, when we talked about it last, it was coming up to resistance, which is this gap down that goes from June 3rd. That had three and a half million shares. Yeah, got three yesterday. So it's not attacking it with volume. We'll be back in a minute. TFNN has been your trusted source of analysis for bonds, metals, stocks, commodities, and options for years. And we are happy to announce that we are bringing that same caliber of analysis for the Forex market. Teddy Kekstad has 30 plus years of experience in Forex trading, commodity risk management, Forex hedging, volatility, and so much more. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with elite coverage of all major currency pairs, including the DXY, Euro Dollar, Pound Dollar, Aussie Dollar, dollar yen, dollar Swiss franc, and so much more. Teddy will recommend specific trades when the market presents them and provide updates throughout the week when warranted. For the month of July, inaugural members to the Tiger Forex Report will receive 25% off the monthly subscription for as long as they're subscribed. Just use promo code TEDDY25 to lock in the added savings. This offer is good only for the month of July, so do not miss your opportunity to save on the Tiger Forex Report. TFNN, educating investors. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. And we're back. Uh, got uh, to Micron with two gaps down. So you got about a buck and a half on the first one. You got about uh, eh, a little over a buck and a half on the second one here. Uh, just assume that you're probably going to get a third gap lower. Again, uh, NVIDIA talking about games, uh, business being a little low. Micron, as we talk a lot, uses... Uh, or sells a great deal of their most, uh, 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 what would you call it, highest margin memory uh, for VRAM for these video cards for NVIDIA and AMD. So that's going to continue. Uh, but uh, they see that weakness, and of course that is the highest margin. Uh, the idea would be to find uh, Micron about the right time uh, that both AMD and NVIDIA get back to buying a lot of that high-speed, high-margin memory. Uh, but, uh, yeah, again, it may be before the – it may take till late in the year. There's probably about a two- or three-month lead on memory production for Micron um, and uh, the orders from, uh, from uh, uh, AMD and Intel – all right, excuse me, AMD and uh, NVIDIA. Uh, but you actually have uh, Intel coming along also. I'm not sure that they're using Micron memory. Uh, they're just starting, those video cards are just starting to show up. Uh, and, you know, if they're any good, could they hurt uh, Intel? I mean, could they hit, I can't even think about it right now. Can they hurt AMD or NVIDIA's business in the video card, I, I just, for me, it just seems like Intel, every time they put their foot down, it, it's in the wrong hole. So uh, they picked a really horrible time, maybe, to introduce their video cards. Uh, a year ago would have been much better, uh, even though that they weren't ready to go. Maybe people would have bought them, uh, even though they didn't have great drivers. But now, in the worst glut of video cards, very tough. But, you know, Intel's a big company. Maybe they can hang on to it for a number of years. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Looked at Apple. We looked at Mac. Uh, Look at Microsoft. Uh, t -t 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 okay. CRSP. Got a question. We'll take a look at CRISPR. It's kind of hanging out here at the highs. Uh, I don't know. The biggest problem I have is it looks like 
maybe the IBB is starting to top out. I like this sector better just because it has a, low, a, hot low, a, a whole lot more stocks in it than most ETFs for biotech. I know a lot of people that trade the other ones because they don't. They're a little bit more focused. Uh, and But you've got over 220 stocks in the IBB, so it gives you a little bit better read. But I'm going to say you do have – it's not a horrible-looking one, uh, but you have a little bit of a reversal pattern. And depending on how we close out here today, if you close down just a little bit more, uh, what would be the low of the day? One. 127, 128-ish out here if we get a little sell-off before the close. Uh, that could put a little bit of a top uh, in the IBB and look for it to return to about 124. Not the end of the world, but maybe uh, more of a trading range in the IBB. Uh, to, 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 okay. Where am I looking at in the spies? Well, I suspect we're looking back down um, around that gap at about 394 uh, if we break through the gap that we have right now. But, yeah, um, any kind of big failure here would suggest that we're going back to the candle of the 27th of June or July, 27th of July, and the low of the day on that day was uh, 394. So that's pretty close out here to where support should be on any kind of big reversal. Now, when we look at the top, which we had yesterday, you uh, look at the June 2nd high at 417.44. That had uh, 96 million shares. We got into that with uh, to, to about 54 million shares yesterday. He got into it with 67 million shares on the 3rd. So there wasn't a lot of juice as we went and attacked those highs. You're pulling back a little bit. It is lighter volume. I don't think we get one more bite at the apple, mostly because the amount of energy uh, off that 362 low, um, well, if you look at my power law vector indicator number, uh, was 22 on the way down and 16 on the way up. So why it took a little longer? and had a lot of light volume. Uh, the, the volume characteristic is not fairly good uh, in this. Let's go back here and pop this up real good, real quick. But you had the lows, but especially since we started heading back up, you can kind of make a uh, kind of a nice little down wedge uh, for volume as we got back into these highs. So it didn't really continue it really about 395, 394, really kind of dropped out except for those three days that went up. Then we had a whole lot, which I suspect was distribution uh, for the last four or five days. And then the reversal yesterday and we're probably getting a little bit more of it. But uh, yeah, I think we probably have a fairly wide trading range. But um, on the... Uh, on a medium term scale, you're probably looking at 394 ish on the bow. Uh, okay. And what else do we have? Okay. Uh, okay. Question on CCJ. We've got a minute left here, so we'll get to that. I think I was still looking. Uh, for it to pull back to about 2350. That's this gap higher uh, back on the 27th of July. That came up with 12 million shares. So that's a good day. Sign of strength. Uh, you're pulling back today with just 2.7 million shares. The question is whether or not you get that uh, 2350. Uh, in a bear market, I know it's tough, especially with crude being uh, uh, kind of floating around here and gold starting to move to get too interested in it. But uh, I, the future is probably nuclear power. We don't have anything really else to go to, and uh, we continue to paint ourselves in a corner by not uh, developing more uh, avenues of fossil fuels. But uh, I do digress. Okay. T -t 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 -t. Question about Williams-Sonoma, which may have to wait until we return. 
but uh, we will return. William Sonoma, as we return. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. Now, we looked at uh, that. We looked at that. A oh, question on the SMHs. SMH. Okay. Well, yeah, I think the first line of defense would be the low of the 27th, and that is 225. So you kind of got into that today. Uh, you certainly got into it with what's going to be heavier volume. 5.6 million shares right now, and... You are only had five million that whole day up, which is actually some fairly decent volume. So yeah, I, uh, 225 would be interesting to see if that can hold. Um, you do have uh, the next move down to 215. You're pulling back a little bit, but uh, I don't see. I know everybody's about as bullish as you can get. Um, they've covered their shorts, 
and there aren't a lot of people shorting out here and not many people thinking uh, and following along with shorts. Uh, so eh, you can think about what's going to happen over the next day. I'm fairly bearish, but uh, we shall see. The proof of the pudding will probably be in the results tomorrow for the market. Uh, let's see, we got about a minute left. Let's take a look at volume. Uh, as I said, volume up and down is fairly light, probably waiting for the CPI numbers tomorrow morning. About 7.5 billion shares. And again, uh, the, real, uh, the rallies have been on very light volume, maybe just a little lighter than the downside, which isn't heavy. But uh, my guess is we're probably going to see that volume either come in uh, tomorrow morning or before the close here today. So when you can, not when you have to, we will see you tomorrow. Same bad channel. Same bad time. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to